Diodes are the precursor to the invention of the transistor. They actually consist of similar material as transistors, however they only have about half. Two of the most common types of diodes are called the LED, which is famous for its light-emitting properties, and the rectifier diode, which is commonly used for converting AC electricity into DC electricity. We already used the LED a few times in previous experiments, so let's use it once more to get a better feeling for how it works. First, we'll need a breadboard and from the parts kit, a 9 volt connector, a 9 volt battery, a red LED, a 5 kilo ohm trim pot, and some breadboard wire from the wire kit. Now, I'll connect power and ground to the red and blue bus lines of the breadboard using the 9 volt connector. Next, I'll put the trim pot into the breadboard and connect the outer two pins of the trim pot to power and ground. Finally, I'll add the red LED. The 5K trim pot is actually a variable resistor that goes from 1 ohm to 5000 ohm. And if I vary the trim pot with a screwdriver like this, the LED becomes brighter and darker due to the change in voltage and current when the trim pot's resistance value is varied. An interesting property of diodes is how they turn on and off. If I use my digital multimeter to measure the voltage going to the LED, you can see that at one distinct voltage, the LED really turns on nice and bright. A standard diode acts like an on and off switch. It is either in an on state, which means electricity can pass through and allow a circuit to operate, or it is in an off state, blocking any electrical current from flowing through the diode and the circuit. This type of on or off quality occurs only at certain voltages, depending on the diode, which makes it very useful for converting the AC type of electricity into a stable DC form of electricity. To better see this on-off property of diodes, let's perform another quick experiment. We'll need one 9 volt battery and one AAA battery and a single red LED. Bend the pins of the red LED so that it can touch both sides of the AAA battery. When we connect the diode across the AAA battery, it never turns on, no matter which way we connect it. However, if you try it with the 9 volt battery, the LED turns on and very brightly. So why does this happen? Most diodes turn on when a voltage of about 0.7 volts reaches it. However, LEDs are special and require 2 to 4 volts to turn on, which explains why a single AAA battery's 1.25 volts couldn't turn it on but the 9 volt battery could. The circuit symbol for a diode looks like this. And the circuit symbol for an LED looks like this, with arrows signifying that it emits light. Let's take a second and draw out the two circuits from a previous experiment. First, we used a 1.5 volt battery with an LED. But the voltage wasn't high enough, so the LED didn't turn on. Then, we used a plus 9 volt battery with an LED, and the voltage was definitely high enough, so the LED lit up super bright. The LED was super bright because typically LEDs only require 2 to 5 milliamp of current, and without a current limiting resistor before the LED, like right here, a very large amount of current flowed through the LED, probably damaging it. So you usually don't want to connect an LED directly to a battery.
All diodes, whether they are LEDs, surface mount, or through hole, have a straight line marking like this, or this straight edge on the LED. This marking represents the cathode output, making the other pin the anode. If you take a second look at the diode circuit symbol, you can clearly see the straight line is present in the circuit on the cathode side of the diode, often connecting straight to ground. The other very important thing to remember about diodes is that DC electrical current can only flow through them in one direction. If you put a diode in backwards, it won't turn on. The diode symbol is meant to look like an arrow pointing the way that current flows through it. This way, there's no confusion. Let's put all this new knowledge to work by performing another experiment. You'll need a 9 volt battery connector a 9 volt battery, 470 ohm resistor, 1N4148 diode, and an LED. First, the battery is connected to the circuit, then the resistor connects power to a row on the breadboard, then we take the diode, connect it to the resistor, and finally, the LED connects from the diode to ground. If you connected the circuit up correctly, the LED turns on. Now, let's pull the 1N4148 diode out of the circuit and connect it backwards like this. Notice that the circuit completely stops functioning and the LED turns off. This shows you very clearly that current can only flow through the diode in one direction. The LED will still turn on if we connect it directly to the resistor, but the diode will not allow current to flow through it since it's in backwards. So if we put the diode back in the correct position, with the cathode black marked side connecting to the LED, things return to normal, and the LED is back on. Standard diodes are not always so obvious when looking at circuit boards, but if they are there, like these big ones in the middle, they will carry a label with D and then the number, like D10 or D11. Another very common application of big flyback diodes is on motor controller boards to prevent damaging your circuit, like the diodes on this PCB. It is probably no surprise to you that diodes, particularly LEDs, are very common in electrical circuits. LEDs are found in everything from flashlights to cool POV clocks to laptop power supplies. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Thank you for watching an introduction to modern electronics, the diode. If you're ready for more, please continue on to learn about the transistor, or you can go back and study more about the inductor.